Hey everybody, thanks for joining today. We're gonna read a book that I really, really love. Um, I remember years ago reading this book for fourth graders that I was teaching. Um, I think I even read it with the fifth grade class that I taught one year and then I'm so excited to be reading it with third graders. So this book um, is Miscellaneous, A Vocabulary Disaster. Um, and the standard that we're working on with this book is RL 3.4, which is basically just figuring out what words mean. Um, but the two I can statements are, I can determine the meaning of unknown words and phrases as they are used in a text, and I can distinguish between literal and non-literal meaning of words and phrases. And remember that when we're done reading the book, you can go to these, um, pages in your document and you can answer the questions by clicking in the box and typing. So, let's go ahead and get started. And I might have to move myself as we read because the pictures are in different places. All right. None of this would have happened if it wasn't for Forrest. Forrest is not a thicket of trees. Forrest is a boy, a sick boy, a boy sneezing and coughing all over my desk and pencils. That sounds disgusting. I caught Forrest cold and had to stay home from school on Tuesday. Tuesday is Vocabulary Day at Webster School. Follow my advice. Never get sick on Vocabulary Day. On Tuesday afternoon, I called my best friend, Star, who is not a luminous celestial object as seen as a point of light in the sky, but a very smart girl who listens perfectly on Vocabulary Day. She was late for baseball practice, so she spelled the first 14 vocabulary words as fast as she could. I had to scribble them quickly because her mom was calling her to the car. The last one's miscellaneous, Star yelled. I gotta go. I hope you feel better tomorrow, Sage. And she hung up the phone with a crash. I didn't feel much better on Wednesday, so my mom called Mrs. Page, who is not a single side of a printed sheet of paper, usually found in a book usually found bound in a book. She's my teacher, and actually Mrs. Page is a good name for her because she reads to us every day. My mom told her, yes, I had my math problems and vocabulary words, and yes, I would get better soon. Every week, Mrs. Page gives us a list of words with a theme, like story writing or musical performance or electricity. We're supposed to look up each word in the dictionary, but sometimes I already know the words, so I try to make the definitions sound like I looked them up. Uh, like tree, a large leafy plant with tall a tall wooden trunk that pushes roots into the ground and branches into the sky. I thought I was pretty good at definitions until this week. My mom says, pride goeth before a fall. Pride, an unduly high opinion of oneself. Goeth, old English word for to go. Fall, what happened on Monday, vocabulary test day. By Thursday afternoon, my head felt like it was stuffed with cotton and my throat felt swollen shut. I finished defining my vocabulary words while propped up in bed with a box of tissues on one side and a gigantic red dictionary on the other. It's hard to look up words in a huge book while you're in bed blowing your nose, so I made my own dictionary definitions for as many of them as I could. Hypothesis. What you guess will happen in your science experiment. Category, a bunch of things that are alike. Miscellaneous. The last word seemed a little odd to me because I couldn't figure out what she had to do with snakes or categories or theories. Mrs. Page rarely gives us people's names on our vocabulary list, but we have had a few that turned into words like Louis Pasteur for pasteurization and George Washington for Washington, D.C. So I decided she must have been included for a reason. You should know that for years I had wondered who Miss Elanius was. When I was little, I figured out that she had something to do with the kitchen because the Miss Elanius drawer held the spoons too big to fit anywhere else, the sharp corn holders shaped like tiny cobs, and the spaghetti spork, that weird cross between a spoon and a fork that perfectly lifts slippery spaghetti out of the bowl. I thought maybe she was an ancestor an ancient relative long dead, who left, a, left us all these odd things in the drawer. Then just last year, my mom and I were at the grocery store, and it all fell into place. We were in one of those very big hurries when she said, you go get some of that long Italian bread and two sticks of butter. I'll get miscellaneous things and meet you here at the cash register. 
I found the bread and butter, and my mom came back with spaghetti sauce, a can of Parmesan cheese, a can of corn, and a big green box of spaghetti with a beautiful woman on the front. She was drawn so that her hair tumbled perfectly across the box and ended in a little plastic window making the spaghetti look like the ends of the strands of her hair. There she was, Miss Alanius. So, propped up on pillows in my bed, with a tissue in one hand and a pencil in the other, I wrote, Miss Alanius, the woman on green spaghetti boxes whose hair is the color of uncooked pasta and turns into spaghetti at the ends. And then I fell asleep. I finally got better over the weekend and felt great on Monday. I turned in my homework to Mrs. Page and sat down at my desk, glad to be back at school with my friends. I was even glad to see Forrest at our morning circle meeting. First, I want to remind you of the 10th annual vocabulary parade on Friday, said Mrs. Page. I hope you're all working on your word costumes. Second, please remember to bring your bus money and permission slips for our science museum field trip tomorrow. And third, instead of our usual Monday test, we're going to have a vocabulary bee today. Everyone line up here by the chalkboard and I'll choose a, a word from our list. After I pronounce the word, please spell it and define it. If you're correct, go to the end of the line. If you miss the word, please sit down at your desk and look it up in the dictionary. Write the word five times and define it once. Star was first with museum, M-U-S-E-U-M, a building for exhibiting objects about art or history or science, she said, and went to the end of the line. Cliff, not a high, steep face of rock, but one very tall boy, answered to the word dinosaur, D-I-N-O-S-A-U-R, a prehistoric extinct reptile often huge, and he went to the back of the line. I was 10th, and when Mrs. Page called out my word, I spelled capital M-I-S-S, -S, capital A-L-A-I-N-E-U-S, and added the woman on green spaghetti boxes whose hair is the color of uncooked pasta and turns into spaghetti at the ends. There was a moment of silence in the room. I smiled at Mrs. Page. She waited to see if I would add anything else, and when I didn't, she grinned, not smiled, grinned, to draw back the lips and bare the teeth, as in a very wide, wide smile and the entire class burst into one huge, giggling, laughing, falling-down mass of kids. Forrest was doubled over. Start, my best friend, was laughing so hard tears came to her eyes. By now, even Mrs. Page was laughing. Pride goeth before a fall. I was sage, one who shows wisdom, experience, judgment. Why were they laughing? Wise girl with words, my dad always called me. What had I said? I was beginning to turn red red, the color of embarrassment. Finally, the room quieted. Mrs. Page opened her dictionary and wrote on the board, miscellaneous, M-I-S-C-E-L-L-A-N-E-O-U-S, consisting of various kinds or qualities, a collection of unrelated objects. My jaw dropped as I looked at the spelling. My eyes bulged as I read the definition. I didn't bother to tell anyone about my mom and the spaghetti sport and the grocery store. Humbled, aware of my shortcomings, modest, meek, I dragged myself back to my seat and wrote miscellaneous five times and defined, defined it once. And that's when I remembered I had even drawn a picture of the spaghetti box for extra credit. I was devastated, wasted, ravaged, ruined destroyed, finished, brought to an end. They called me Miss Alanius for the rest of the day. Sometimes a person couldn't even get the words out before bending over with laughter. The day took a week to end. I got off the bus. When I got off the bus, I slumped home, devastated, ruined, finished. I told my mom the whole story, from the kitchen drawer to the grocery store to the vocabulary bee. Even my own mother laughed a little at the part about the drawing for extra credit. But at least she stopped fast and said, you know what? I always say, there's gold in every mistake. 
Gold, a bright yellow precious metal of great value. Mistake, something done, said, or thought in the wrong way. Impossible, I told her. Impossible, not capable of happening. I couldn't believe I ever had to go back to school. But the next day we went to the science museum and everyone forgot about miscellaneous at the snake exhibit and the dinosaur bone lab. And then the guide said, the field of bone archaeology has been influenced by a wide and unusual array of miscellaneous discoveries around the world. The class burst out laughing, and the guide was pleased with herself for entertaining us so easily. And I knew, to apprehend with certainty, that my mistake was still alive and well, and nothing like gold. After school, I lay on my bed and stared at the wall. How could I have been so stupid? My mom came in and said it was time to work on my costume for the vocabulary parade. We had finished the cape for capable, but I still needed to make the lettering down the back. Mom, I said, I could only be a mistake this year. Miss steak. Suddenly, I sat up. I looked at my mom. She looked at me. I smiled. She smiled. Sweetheart, she said, let's take another look at that cape. It took m the most courage I've ever had to walk out on stage as Miss Elanius, queen of all miscellaneous things. But when Mr. Bell read my word and definition, everyone applauded and laughed wildly in a manner lacking all restraint, and I grinned at my mom across the auditorium. Forrest came right after me when he bowed his precipitation watering can hat rained on Mr. Bell's new suit, and the entire audience gasped then cheered when Mr. Bell smiled at his soggy clothes. To my astonishment, great shock and amazement, I won a gold trophy for the most original use of a word in the 10th annual vocabulary parade. So this time my mom was right. There was gold in this mistake. And next year I think I'm going to be... Oh, and I'm right in the middle of the words. Ah. Mysterious. Investigator of all things mysterious. All right, so we are done with the book. And remember, when you're done listening, you can, in your own document, go to the three questions that are on these pages and answer them. And I hope you enjoyed the book. I really love this one. It was fun. Bye, guys.